Okay, here we are back. And hour number three. We're going to do something unusual this hour with Norbert Heuser. Uh, he has uh, done his research, as Norbert does. He's quite a researcher. And, in, and this is an area that I personally have had uh, trouble with. I, I, don't, I don't like tattoos. All right, now, a lot of you out there are tattooed, but don't take it personally. I just don't like them. The idea of putting that ink in the body... People don't understand how the tattoo holds its shape. And it's it has to do with your immune system and this toxic ink that they're putting in you and the macrophages in, in your immune system and the bloodstream will, will attack the ink and, and kind of hold it at bay. That's how that's how these things are actually held in place. Your immune system does it. It's not just putting a color in your skin and your your body ignores it. No, your immune system doesn't want that in there, nor should it. So, yeah, not a good thing. But we're going to learn a lot about that this hour from Norbert. Welcome back, Norbert. How are you? Well, thanks a lot for having me. It's good to be back. I appreciate it. Thank you. We always learn from you. It's great. I'm looking forward to this. Well, it's going to be intense. Originally, uh, I had the idea, if you may recall, to do the show about tattoos and piercings. But the material yes. I have is so much that I must say I would only concentrate on the tattoos tonight. And maybe next time I come with you on board, we do uh, piercings. And next time I have another interesting topic. I just publishing a book in America called um, Every Coffee Drinker is a Drug Addict. So maybe you're up to this in the next show we do. Interesting. Uh, well, this is all about health and wellness, so it, it fits. All right. I agree. So to the, the idea of, of uh, hold on one sec. The idea of tattooing the body, the way I've always felt, always felt this way, is that it's, it's an abusive thing to do to a beautiful instrument you were given by God or whoever you want to believe, however it works. Uh, and you're, you're, you're mutilating yourself. This okay. is a mutilation process. Yes. It it's is. not like scarification of the skin. But it's still, you're putting something of a foreign nature into your body, causing an immunological response to it. Your, your, your immune system does not like tattooed ink in you. No. Don't, don't believe any, anyone who says it does. doesn't. No, it uh, so I don't like the idea of, of mutilating your body in any way. Uh, and this, this fits in that basket for me. I'm not speaking for anyone else here. Go ahead, Barbara, please. Sure. So let's quickly look at the a bit of history. The word tattoo is, sounds a bit strange to us, right? It's uh, come from Polynesian, Samoan, Tahitian background, Tonga, where the word came up. I don't know how it came to us, uh -huh. but I guess it is not that important. But that's where tattoo comes from. It means body art, translated as body right. art. Okay. And it's very old. When I was a kid, the only ones who had tattoos at this time were some roughnecks, some same sailors. They would come back from yeah. trip to Shanghai, yeah. Hong Kong, wherever, and I got the tattoo there, mostly yeah, yeah. on the upper arm or chest, an anchor, half-naked woman, a mermaid, and so on. You know, that was the first time yeah. I ever saw a tattoo, right? And, and the big sailing ship on the chest, too. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so in many countries, tattoos have been around for hundreds and thousands of years, whether it's in Polynesia or Japan, Korea, even the Philippines, Egypt, North America, South America, Russia, the Caucasus. Mm -hmm. But it never yeah. had been to that volume as we see it today. There were very few individuals, small groups. There have been tattoos finding in mummies in Egypt, which date 3,000 years ago. And, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. That's interesting. And if you huh. look here at the picture number one, What's up with these two guys? Well, this is around 1870 in Japan. Um, uh -huh. And uh, Japan plays a major role there, we'll talk about in a minute. However, um, even we have older tattoos. The oldest tattoos we are aware of is 5,000 year, 5,300 years ago. A man they found in the ice and named him Ötzi. If you look at number two, Ötzi is a glacier mummy from the Copper Age. He was discovered accidentally by hikers in 1991, together with his clothing and equipment, and he was apparently killed. So that's the oldest 
a tattoo we are aware of, 5,300 years old. And this good gentleman is lying in a museum in Bolzano, which is in Tirola, the northern part of Italy. I've been there, checked it all out. Very interesting. According to experts, he had such where, a... Uh, where, where, Norbert, excuse yeah. me, where are the... It looks like on his forearm, his left forearm, which is folded across, Yeah, it looks like a, a bracelet or something on there yes. with beads. Yes. Is, is, that, is that what that is? Yeah. Now he... Um, Do we know? The, the, the uh, experts believe that the tattoos he have are a medical character like on his wrist at all joints, wherever there yeah. may be discomfort, yeah. they may have information through that respective therapist knew exactly where they must reach out for. So for us, the idea that 5,300 years ago, they had tattoos as an indicator for health issues is very, very interesting. Um, Are they going to try and bring this guy back with some DNA manipulation and well, cross him with a... Uh, some human, current, contemporary human <laughs> DNA. And well, we cannot improve the uh, uh, the actual <laughs> humanity. It doesn't, I don't believe that we can reverse any crap which is going on and make people more sane. Right. So uh, that's him, you know. I agree. Um, so mm -hmm. the uh, tattoos, his body was preserved, and it's in a museum. However, in ancient Japan... Tattoos were popular body decorations. If we look at <coughs> image number three, image number uh -huh. three, you see an excess of tattoos on these bodies of these warriors and people in Japan. It was, you might it, say that. It was That's a, huge yeah, tattoos. Yeah. Big culture in Japan. Okay, and then it was taken over the the um, tattoos by criminal gangs in Japan called yakuza. And uh, they had very specific and very typical tattoos, um, which then they were assigned to specific circles or connections. And these criminal gangs were so strong. If we look here at uh, the image number four, um, I mean, it's horrendous. If you see the amount of tattoos on their body, uh, it's crazy in image number four. And the um, Japanese government went that far in 1948, to ban these tattoos from wearing. They wanted to counteract these criminals, but they didn't uh. really make it. And some years later, that limitation was reversed. Uh. All right. And, and in picking Now, up, let me ask yeah. you something about the, the color, the inks. Yes. I would assume 100, 150 years ago, they probably made like they made color dyes back then. They used plants to do it yeah. and then use needles to insert that under the skin. The The tattoos today, what have you found in terms of the safety of the inks being yeah. used now? Can I ask If there is any safety. Well, I don't know. I'm going to come to this. Can I do this a bit later in the concept? Okay. Yeah? Of course. Of course. You know, of course. But I, I looked yes. into this, of course. Yeah, it's a part of it. So in Polynesia, they have very elaborated tattoos. If you look here at um, this image number five, uh, right. it looks like uh, like a clothing on their skin, like leggings pants. Yes. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. It was pulled yeah. over the own, uh, the entire body, um, and it would give him information which people or group one belongs to, what family he comes from, like a barcode nowadays. You know, it's very mm. similar to a barcode. Mm -hmm. So tattoos were also used as a declaration of belonging, for example, to a certain ethnical group or in the negative sense, like a branding. These tattoos can also right. represent a lifetime commitment because you can't get rid of them. Then tattoos were used sure. as a warning when prisoners, convicts uh, were wearing tattoos and they could not easily hide themselves and to a warning to the rest of the society. Tattoos were used in slavery where it simply says, you belong to me. It also was known for forced prostitution, another form of slavery. Again, determination, you belong to me. The, gotcha. tattoo, the tattoos were all for the membership. 
and they're also used as ritual symbols in the religious sense. Um, there's, for example, in uh, Bosnia in 1990, the Catholic girls were tattooed to prevent conversion to Islam. Very strange thought, uh -huh. isn't it? Uh huh. Uh huh. So we have religious identification. We have tattoos can be applied as custom jewelry, as a fashion accessory. It even goes that far as getting eyelid tattoos instead of eyeliner. Women have eyelid tattoos instead of eyeliner. I've seen that. And they also have their eyebrows done so they don't have to mess with those. Yeah. I've seen tattooed eyebrows. Yeah. That's <laughs> strange. And uh, yeah. always uh, tattoos were always in between a sign of protest and political beliefs. And it's even known in history that some emperors, kings and queens got tattooed. Whatever may have motivated them or so, I have no idea. So that's a bit of the history and where it's coming right. from and where it's all over the place. So let's now look at the people who tattoo. In many, most, maybe all countries, those who tattoo do not need to prove their ability, skills, no exams, no certificate, certificate no call, technical college degree in the sense of a real profession. All you need to do is register your business for five bucks or ten. You buy some equipment, whatever you want to buy. Depending on the country, the health department may stop by to check hygienic conditions. That's all. What do these tattoo people have to show? Any abilities? Absolutely nothing. That is scary. They need no certification, no testing, no nothing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All they uh, refer to their artistic uh, abilities, which is a classical term. So for those who get tattoos, falls for me under the heading of voluntary mutilation, a voluntary bodily harm. That means I let my body hurt, and it has no legal consequences for nobody. But it has pl plenty of health consequences, which we'll go into soon. Um so we're going to this very soon. Then I went to a tattoo shop when I was doing my research. And I played the stupid, which is easy for me. I'm going with a phrase in a tattoo shop. My daughter wants to get a tattoo, and I have my doubts about that. Aren't there any short-term or long-term health consequences? Each and So you went in by yourself yeah. asking questions. Yeah. Okay. Each and every one I asked all said, Absolutely no health consequences. And everyone pointed out, insisted on their clean gear, the hygiene of their treatment and the instruments. But they have no, uh -huh. absolutely no idea what's happening in the body and refers to health. They just always talk about how great they are as an artist. And many of these so people, Nor Norbert, yeah, did yeah. You, excuse me, please. Yeah, no, did no. you find out, do they reuse their needles in there? They must. They must sterilize them, probably yeah. in an autoclave, yeah. and they reuse the needles. Sure. Well, as, as you know, I'm sure, autoclaves do not sterilize prions, for example, other proteins that can be catastrophic to the body. If someone is suffering from having been vaxxed, and they use needles on that person, they are going to be pulling out spike proteins on those needles when the needles are used, and they can put it in an autoclave for a year. It's not going to kill those spike proteins. Sure. Those proteins can withstand, prion proteins especially, can withstand over 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, and an autoclave is about 275. Well, you this see, is crazy. You see, none of these people so have you're any... You're begging for trouble. Of course, none of these people have any technical education. And there is no legal obligation for them to take classes or courses. Uh, nobody looks into this. All you need is to register your company and off you go. And the questions these people from uh, local authorities sometimes ask or look into the hygienic standard, it's very upfront and easy, you know. And these people, they don't deal with these topics. They're so enthusiastic about what they're doing and uh, when it's attached to economic uh, situation to make money, um, they don't want to listen to any counter arguments. 
And when I, tr when I tried at the end of my questionnaire to point out a few things, you could see they were just blocking me, get the hell out of here. We don't want you here, you know. And this is where it differs from people who have responsibility for what they do. For me, these people have no responsibility for what they do. If I have responsibility when I sell no. a product, no. here tattoo as example, I agree. From, from my point of view, I have an obligation to know everything that is positive and to learn everything that could be dangerous in this context in order to enlighten my customer and say, hey, people, listen, pay attention. There are potential downsides. These are this and this and this and this. Make your decision. You want still want it or not that they don't do this. This is too ethical. So what exactly happening with tattoos? Um, I must preface that I, as a life coach, try everything that people live healthy. This includes, among others, uh, detoxifying yourself, draining heavy metals out of your body, and avoid poisoning. That's one of my main jobs. Um, when I spoke before about tattoos in many cultures and tradition, that was all done, as you pointed out, with natural dyes. Today, however, there's no longer the case. Today, the dyes are from car paint industry, primarily. Oh, no. And the printing, oh, no. and the printing industry. <laughs> car uh -huh. paint and printing industry. And all these dyes are full of heavy metals and other toxins. This counts as well for sued. Besides these toxic paints... They use soot as well, and soot was used in the old times as well. And that was the most uh, dangerous thing they ever used in the old times. Everything else, as you said, were dyes made from plants and so on. Um, and all these dyes they use do not correspond or match to any health standards. There is no health standards. These dyes include, among others, uh, zinc, cadmium, nickel, and clearly these materials... Cadmium yeah. is one of the most deadly things you can put in the body. Yes. It's terrible. Wow. And there's a list in Europe um, called RAPEX list. And the dyes of tattoos come up all the times on that list as being dangerous. So you can see that these dyes are not coming from an organic farm. And there are no dyes no. which have been tested ever to qualify for tattoos where the government would say, okay, here are the dyes, we tested them, you can use them for tattoos, right? Nobody cares and looks into it. There is no lobby uh, who has an interest to find the truth and to publish it big time. Now, what happens in the process of tattooing itself? They have these machines which inject nine, between, somewhere between 90 and 120 pinpricks per second into the second layer of the skin, the dermis, up to three millimeters deep, 90 to 120 pinpricks per second. These needle pricks endure the, uh, in, uh, hurt the skin um, and affect the underlying tissues. It's, it, it cannot be any other way. You have immediate inflammation, and everybody knows that, and the tattoo people tell you this and say, okay, you have inflammation now. Now for, for two weeks, you cannot take a shower and uh, leave bandage on it and so on and so forth. And these inflammations, uh. these inflammations may last for several days or even weeks. I mean, the body inflammation, why? The body is rejecting the treatment. You're harming the body. And uh, this is about the level of uh, burning grade one. If you burn yourself grade one, that's about the level of the inflammations. First, of first degree burn. Got yes. it. First degree burn. Um, so if you look at number six now, you see a schematic of the skin and you see the needles just punching in to the skin, right? That's what it shows. Got it. That's what it shows. So it goes to the, it looks like it goes to the third layer of the skin. Yeah. Now, what happens and is... it leaves a little tiny drop of color in there. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so we have a, uh, uh, an injury of the skin and connective tissues. Now, yeah. one has to understand is that through our skin, well, our body is based on electricity. And through our... A lot of people don't know that. 
I mean, without electricity, our heart and our brain wouldn't work. So we have electricity in our body. And the finest uh -huh. electrical currents, which are part of the nature of bodily functions, flow through the connective tissues. This connective tissue uh, electrical flow is disrupted by tattoos, as are all by scars. If you have a scar on your skin, it disrupt, disrupts the, uh, the energy flow in your body. So it's a systematic connection which disables the electrical flow in your skin, which we need as a human being. Besides the risk of infection. Well, let, let me, let, yeah? if I might, uh, Norbert. Yeah, interrupt me anytime, when, please. When you think about this, the idea of uh, disrupting the electrical, electrical flow in your skin, think about acupuncture. An acupuncture needle goes in about as deep as this, uh, and it turns back on obstructed electrical signaling. It's supposed to harmonize it and allow it to do what it wants. With tattoos, you have permanent, it would seem to me, interference and blockage of the normal electromagnetic frequency and signature that flows through your skin. Yes. Correct? Yes. And you have lots of fine holes in your skin. So especially in the first week after the tattoos, you cannot go to a swimming pool where bacteria is always romping or somewhere else. I, this, yeah. Well, I, yeah. You know, in, in all the years of doing this program, I've never done war. This is the most interesting program ever on tattoos. Never done anything that, like this. So please go ahead. I'm learning a lot. So the needles cause scars and the scars interference fields in your body. Um, the consequences are big time. Now, what happens now, the immune system realizes in a, like like if you have a splinter in your finger right everyone had that yeah within a split second the immune system realizes here is something which does not belong here and it sends white blood cells to fight this enemy which doesn't belong here this happens in split seconds now the white blood cells attack that product which doesn't belong here and in this attack in the war against this product, the white blood cells die, thousands. And this white blood cells which die, we call pus. A lot of people don't have that concept what pus is. So the pus is a mm -hmm. consequence of the body defense white blood cells. And now, as we inject the dye into the skin, what happens is particles, they don't belong there. Some dye sits, yeah. sits now in the second, third layer of the uh, dermis of the skin. However, they create that wanted image. It's estimated that uh -huh. between minimum of 30% and maximum of 60 to 80% of the dye, especially the liquid part, migrate somewhere in the body. So it's no more part of the beautiful picture. It just sinks in the body, especially in the lymph system, in the liver and in the mm -hmm. brain. So you'll see in a second what I mean by that. But one has to remember that what you see, the, the image, is only a part of the dye. Most of the dye goes into the body. So, or it migrates, doesn't yeah. stay there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't tell you that either, I'm sure. Of course not. They don't oh, no, it stays it. right there where you see it. Uh -huh. yeah, no, no, no. Um, now, what happens as well, uh, the areas of the, where the skin is affected by the tattoo are very sensitive to the sun. The UV rays split the dye molecules and then therefore can release toxic substances. Uh, in the case of certain colors, and they consider right. carcinogenic substances. Now, if you look, and certain risk groups should not have any tattoos at all, 
pregnant women, diabetics, allergy sufferers, and right. people with skin diseases, right. immune deficiencies, heart diseases, and blood clotting. These people all should never, ever touch a tattoo. So the particles are coming into the body. Now, if we look at the pink picture number seven, there you see macrophages, white blood cells. What they do now, they try to, to protect the body by swallowing, so to speak, encapsulating those dyes. So the dyes which do not stay in the skin and drain down into the body, the white blood cells try to encapsulate them, to neutralize them, to get rid of them. Now, where do they get rid of them? In the majority of the cases, in the lymph system, in the lymph nodes. If you look now that's, at... That's, uh... I get it. everything you're saying, uh, if you think about it, is suggesting some kind of on oncological process. We're talking about potential malignancies here. Oh, yes. This is bad. Oh, very bad. Very, 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 very bad. Now, so it ends up in the lymph system, right? Now, if you look at image number eight, there is a schematic underarm where the lymph nodes are sitting, right? You see that? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. I got it. Now, an interesting test has been done, and I got my hands on the pictures. Right. They had some bodies of people who were deceased, and they cut out the lymph nodes that were removed. Right. And right. now you can clearly see how the dye is sitting in the lymph nodes. So if you take okay, this would be the next the, the next image number nine is a lymph node that has been excised from a, 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 a dead person. Okay. And, and there's the dye. And then you can see and which, that's which, in the lymph node. Yeah, and you can see which colors that person primarily had in his tattoos. Green and yellow. So this stuff migrate, dear friends, and I've seen tattoos that appear to be very vivid when they're they're just done. Later on, they they look like they've faded. Well, the dyes haven't faded. The dyes have actually migrated into the lymph system in some guy. At least in this case, I guess that's where it goes. It could go anywhere in the body. Wherever the blood goes, it can take this dye. Yes, this is crazy. So this guy had yellow, primarily yellow and green tattoos, right? I and, see it. And, yep. and it's sitting in the lymph nodes for years. We don't have long-term observations and analysis. And I think that nobody's really interested into finance research. No. Okay. No, I agree. So, um, yeah. so it sits there and it compromises the lymph nodes, of course, and it compromises your immune system and it <clears> compromises your health, of course, big time. And uh, besides the lymph nodes, it ends up in other um, parts of the body. Lately, I talked to people who had sur who uh, doctors who do surgeries. I discussed with them about this, and they confirmed to me that depending on which surgeries they do, they come across certain organs, the the dyes of the uh, tattoos, which was completely unreal. Surprising for them, yeah. When this suddenly popped up, yeah. and uh, so here's the lymph nodes of somebody, number ten, who had a black dye, primarily black, dark red dye. That's absolutely horrible. This is this is a lymph node. Yes. Okay. Now this is just uh, really disgusting to see. Awful. Well, you know what I wish what I wish would happen, but I'm too idealistic there. That children from youngest age in school are walked right. a person like me or somebody else through this and sees these images and gets an idea. Well, they they deserve informed consent sure. before they do anything like this. 
Yeah, but and they're not getting the right information. But we, but we have to educate people. You see, th th this is why I call this 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 program uh, the the new pandemic. I mean, at the moment, we have between twenty five and thirty percent of the population with tattoos. We don't have hardcore numbers, but that's about it. Twenty five to thirty percent of the population has. That's tattoos. a lot. That's a lot. And it's getting yeah. more. It's getting more. People, what, what, it, it, what you're talking about, Leonard, I'm sorry. Uh, Norbert's explaining peer pressure here, among other things. Everyone wants to be cool, right? They want to be in. So all their friends get tattoos. And it's, you see how it just, it continues to grow. It's being pushed by peers. And everybody wants to be involved. This is really amazing. Go ahead, please. So in the in a few years back, there were late early teenagers and twenties who did tattoos. Nowadays, I even see people in their fifties, sixties, seventies who get tattoos. It's not only teenagers anymore or youngsters. <laughs> you can see oh elderly people. I guess these were people uh, leftovers from Woodstock or so, uh, and they're trying to catch yeah. up. Catch up, you know. But this is how insane it is. And there is no education. This is a, a theme which should be taught in public school, that kids grow up with information, like so many other things, electromagnetic radiation, clean water, and so on. You know, These are all, I, I never used in my lifetime um, certain math, OK? Um, I never used it. But they're teaching all these math classes trigonometry and whatever. Um, and I right. never used it. And what is practical in life and what kids should grow up with, it doesn't come up. So. Oh, they're going to teach common sense. No, no, no. I no agree. Sense. I understand. No common sense. Uh, and no, and more like, like um, my good countryman um, said, um, Einstein, you should teach in the school no facts but to learn, teach children how to think, okay, and how to make decisions. Uh -huh. Right. So we have, with no doubt, a short-term effect of inflammation when you have a tattoo, and we have long-term health effects. However, the average doctor is not able, when a patient comes in and he has this and this and then the other, he will never connect the dots to the tattoos. Never, ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And presumably, yeah. the rest of the life of these people, the immune system is weakened, compromised. Right. And I don't know any way out there because it's getting more and more. It's not only that somebody has wanted to. Usually when people have wanted to, they collect them. It's getting more and more and more. I'm trying to eliminate. Well, let's go on. Yeah. Go on with the pictures here. The, the, there's some more pictures we need to look at Yeah, we can, uh, come when here. you're ready. Yeah. So for me, it's perverted that people who have tattoos go into a health food store to buy organic food. Oh, it's absurd. It's laughably hypocritical, except <laughs> it's tragic. Yeah, it's stupid. It, 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 look, tattoo is self-mutilation. Yes. End of story. And now, after listening to Norbert, we understand that it is a, a toxicological bomb that you put in your body. Yes. And this is why I have my image number 11, one of my basic images for most of my seminars, which I give and workshops. Right. Rest in peace, mankind is extinct because they believed that the laws of nature did not apply to them. If God would yeah. have wanted us to have tattoos, he would have given to you with birth, right? Uh, we think we can do to nature, including our body, whatever we want. It has no consequences. I know. No, that's how they think. Every third person is dying nowadays of cancer. And now with the poor water we drink, with the cell phones, radiation, and on top of all that, the tattoos now, to weaken the body right from the get-go, his immune system? It's crazy. And then we look at species of animals. Oh, they are endangered. 
when in fact we are the species uh -huh. hardest hit by extinction. Just look in the mirror. I agree. We are threatened with extinction. Yeah. And the perverse thing is we do it to ourselves while the animals and plants are threatened with extinction by us. <clears throat> but we do it to ourselves. So the amount of people who get tattoos increases by the day. As I said, nobody knows exactly, but I saw a big jump after 2010. And the last three, four years are just crazy. And as I said, not only for minors, but also for elderly people. And it starts to become in the younger generation as a status symbol. What, you don't have a tattoo? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I agree. I, I know. I get it. So, um, there are four pillars we have to look at when we talk about tattoos. We talked about a bit of historical level. We talked about a bit of society level, the health level. And what's missing now is the psychological level. And you ask yourself, what drives people to have tattoos? Now, this, towards the end of my monologue, this is usually, I always, I always say what I have to say, what I think is right. And I don't care if somebody stepped on somebody's blue suede shoes here. Um, I think that people who choose tattoos choose them as an enrichment of their appearance. And the opportunity to use their skin to show images and opinions that are intended to have an impact on other people. Um, every person has a personal value, every person. To my opinion, that's my personal opinion, the people who have tattoos have a problem that they don't believe in themselves. There's no self-esteem. There's no pride. To my observation, they were typically, in most cases, invalidated from infancy mostly from the parents. Whatever the parents pushed onto children like, you're a loser, you're worth nothing, you're ugly, and, and, and. How often do I hear, see parents attacking right. their kids, how ugly they are, and a shame. And I said mm -hmm. in my seminars for many years, and I stick to that sentence, that parents in many cases are the worst friends you can have. And well, then, unfortunately, that's that's true. But look how effectively society is now destroying the family structure. Yes. As soon as you buy your child a cell phone, that's the moment when your child begins to be programmed away from you, turned against you. And all the good work you've done trying to raise that child and instill values in that child, they begin to be torn down. Yes. And it's it's very sad, very predictable very understandable, but it's it's a tragedy. The war on children is the biggest disgrace, I think, in recorded history. It's what we're doing now. Go ahead, Norbert. No, I, I'm, I'm very happy about your inputs and feedbacks because uh, I put most of the information I wanted to give out tonight right on the table. I gave them all in a crash course here. And I have a saying, which a lot of people don't appreciate when I say this, but I say it anyway because I don't care. In my opinion... Nobody's born as a murderer or child molester. To my personal opinion, people are conditioned through physical and or mental abuse to become a murderer or child mm. molester. If you look at children, two, three, four years old, how happy they are, how great they are, their personalities. And what has happened between the four-year-old and the 18-year-old? Something must have dramatically happened, which is primarily, to my observation, always parents, then perhaps our education school system. I remember myself. I'll tell you a story of my life, which I never told anybody. Okay. I was in school so bad. You know, I never went to university college. I only finished high school. That was it. When I went to with the school bus in the morning, it took 20 minutes to go to the school. And we had on that day a test in math and English. It doesn't matter what. I would stand next to the bus driver in the front, hoping 
we have an accident and I end up in hospital, that I don't need mm. to take that course, that test, because mm-hmm. I know I would mm-hmm. fail again. I would get an F again and I would be depressed and unhappy. My parents would be disappointed. It was dragging mm-hmm. on and for on, for on, for on. So there you get as a child the invalidations as a school system is so screwed. Um, and the interesting part to finish that my life story there, for the last two years before high school, I changed the school because in the school I was, my reputation was shut. I changed the school and I wanted to become good. And within one year, I was the best student of the school because my mindset changed. But only through right. personal, I was lucky or previous life, whatever it is, I don't know. But what I'm saying is the bottom line, when children are invalidated by their parents and by the school system, they have to compensate So when you have a child who comes to you and shows you a painting, they did a painting, and you say, this is beautiful, what does a child do? It turns around and makes the next painting, comes up with the next painting, right? And the next painting. And every time I see a child which destroys toys aggressively with their friends when they're playing, I know that this child was not validated when it tried to contribute something to the family or to the parents. It was rejected. You it was bet. Rejected. Got it. So when it's rejected, what chance does a child have now? It has only one chance to destroy, to get attention. And even if the parents slap them and beat them, that is better attention than no attention. Some attention is better than none. I, I get it. You're making perfect sense. Okay. Yeah. So to sure. my understanding, people who do tattoos have not a great belief about themselves, about their personality, about their beauty, that their beauty as they are, beautiful as they are, and they want to distract yeah. from themselves. And when they say, I do this because I love the art, bullshit. Why, why can you see the art yeah, when it's on I, your yeah. back, on your back of your body, yeah. or on, on on the legs where you cannot even see it on your chest, where you have to be in front right. of a mirror? So, and ninety percent of it's covered up. These these people have uh, many of them very little self esteem. Because if you if you would have self esteem, you would say, "I'm beautiful as I am, no matter who I am. Somebody will love me. I love others, and I have something to offer, and I don't need." To, to sell my skin to try to be impressive. Here's image number 12. And in many mm-hmm. cases, is as well to show how tough you are. You know, because people know, tough guy. understand yeah, that tattoos are hurtful when you get them, right? And everyone says, wow, you know, how many tattoos? And I ask people, how much was the, your body tattoos now? Several thousand dollars, many thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay, and they spend the money for their ego. And this fellow lying there, um, you know, I mean, this is what they spend their money and their time for and their importance. And it's it's a pity because it's getting more, it's getting not less. Now, the problem is a lot of people now who have tattoos are ashamed of them, say I made a wrong decision, I shouldn't have done that. And the problem is you can hardly reverse it. There is some technology where with lasers, the laser focuses on the paint and it kind of explodes the paint, okay? It explodes the paint out of the cells in the skin. This is quite harmful and painful. But what happens now, as we discussed before, now when I explode those paint particles, they're going to end up again in your immune system, most of them. Of course. Right? Yeah. 
So you make everything worse. But lots of people would be happy to get rid of them. And here you see page number 13. This is a woman. I guess it's a woman. She has um, um, a seahorse on the back of on her, on her back, right? In all her life, she never really sees the. Heel. I think that's on her. I think that's on her front side. Um, arms are be. She's holding her arms behind her back. You see, or in, in front of her front, the arms. Okay, I, well, I don't. Ah, know. It's I don't, hard I don't to know. say. Could be either way, but again, uh, lots of people have their artwork on their back where they can never see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and if they have written words, which is totally crazy. I see people, Americans, with uh, Chinese wording or Arabic wording, <laughs> right? I've seen it. Yes. Okay, yes. they tell them by heart what it is so they know it. Um, but it's never the pleasure of art. I can have art on my wall and look at it all the time. Now, there's another chapter which I want to touch before we're done today. For by me, the way, let me say one other thing in, in addition to and to complement what you've said most tattoos are not readily visible to the person who has them no not at all they're visible they're, they're designed to be seen from a distance yes five feet ten feet whatever it, it's all narcissism misdirected narcissism these people are trying to embellish themselves in such a way that people will look at them and think that they're God, it's just all, it has to do with self-esteem. Uh, please go ahead. This next picture is hor horrifying. They all are. <laughs> Now, um, there's another thought, a big thought for me. I'm trying to imagine children, babies, two, three, four, five years of age, who grow up with parents who have these tattoos all over their body. What does it do to the understanding And education about oh, yeah. art, and, that's right, and aesthetics. Sure, and aesthetics. Uh, I cannot imagine what goes through the mind of these children who grow up with that, because in many cases there yeah. are diabolic uh, uh, system pictures, images, uh, not always uh, right. of beautiful flowers. So no, I don't know. understood. I don't know the long-term effect for children who grow up with this. What kind of development they have, and what opinion about beauty and aesthetics. It can't be good, period. It can't. It's just for openers, it can't be good. It's not the kind of thing you want to strive for in life uh, is to engage in self-mutilation. No. Let me, let's, we're almost out of time. Yeah. Can we look at the next picture now with the woman's leg yes, okay. tattooed virtually black? Yes, okay. There's a story. Wow. There's a story behind that, okay? Um, yeah. This lady's legs, her, her name is Lady Cat. K A T Von V O N D, capital D. Lady K A T Von V O N D. She seems I'm, to be a famous tattoo artist. She's known in the scene. Okay. Now she had tattoos on her leg and she wanted to get rid of them, but she couldn't. So what she did, she did a black, black, black over all the tattoos. I see. A way to not see them anymore. Wow. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I think we have covered it pretty much. I mean, there's a lot of small little uh, right. parts that the, the, uh, one can discuss about. Um, right. We have about uh, two minutes okay. at the most. So, so let's go to the next picture yeah. if you want, and then uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll finish up with the, uh, the unit. Okay, go that, ahead. That's picture number 15. Okay. Um, a picture, mixture of tattoos and body art and of piercings and uh, hairstyle. Well, and this lady can and the satanic horn, the satanic horns on yeah. the forehead. Don't miss those too. So th the quote from those this, are implants. This yeah. quote from this lady with the black lad, black leg. Sorry, before anyone starts criticizing, uh -huh. I encourage you to remember that it's okay not to like or even understand things. Yes, true. So what I did with my people in the company, after I went through all this, and I said, look, we got to do something. We've got to do something for people who want to have help. So I have a product in the picture number 16. Last picture. Yeah. 
So I have a product for some years uh, in my in my program called SD One Human Protect. And after I did my venture on tattoos, I said well, I, I got to offer help for people who want help, who people believe in it and go further on, have my blessings. So in this, for the last two weeks, in this unit, I have programmed technology to neutralize negative effects of these tattoo dyes in the body and to get the particles as much as we can out of the body. So we first neutralize the harmful effects of the dyes in the body and created by pin bricks and dyes. And then we neutralize right. and after that, we change the information in the body so that these particles have no more negative information. And that is the biggest help I can offer, I guess, for people who would like perhaps to get a relief. The unit right. is called SD1. If they were to, if they were to want to order this particular SD1 unit, do they make a specific request? No, I programmed it in everything. In every it's SD, all in there. Okay. Everything. So the SD1 is called SD1 Human Protect. Cost two hundred ninety five dollars. It's guaranteed for ten years. And what I do, like in this product, I upgrade things without extra charges. So since last week, I upgraded. People know me about electromagnetic radiation protection. Since last week, I upgraded all electromagnetic radiation protection products in the world, which people bought from me. I upgraded them with six G. They had four G, five G before. Now they have 6G. People don't need to pay money. Got it. Don't need to send it back to the company. With uh, mm -hmm. you're just you're remotely programming. I understand. We're just about uh, out of time. I've got to say good night. But go to improveyourlife.us or click the banner on the home page. It's the second banner on the home page. It'll go to Norbert's site. Improve your life. Dot us and you'll see sd1 right there on the top line and do some research there and look around and Th one, thank you norbert that was very one, helpful one quick last sentence. very informative one quick last sentence many of your yeah. audience are not the people who will get tattoos or want to get tattoos i understand but when you listen to this show and it makes sense to you do me a favor that's my personal message you have children grandchildren nephews who are into this, try to motivate them to listen to that show as an education, which is not giving in school, but on the Jeff Rance show. Try to motivate them to learn about it. Very good. Prior to make that decision. Okay. Thank you, Norbert. We have to say good night. This is excellent information. Very helpful. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Good night.